I was once a sinner, but I came, pardon, to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name reaching down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, oh, yes, it's mine. And the white robed angel sing the story as in a has come home for there's a new name reaching up in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven i am bound for heaven never more to roam there's a new name it's reaching down in glory, 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 and it's yours. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white troop angels sing the story. I see now, rise, come home. For there's a new name reaching down in glory, and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine With my sins forgiven I am bound For heaven never more to roam I was humbly kneeling at the cross Fearing not but God's angry frown When the heavens opened and I saw that my knee was reaching down. that came to my soul now I am forgiven and I know by the blood I am made whole there's a new name reaching down in glory 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 and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white will be just Yes, in a rise, come home. There's a new name reaching down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am born for heaven, never more to roam. There's a new name. Reach it out in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white troop angels sing the story. I seen a rust come home. For there's a new name. Reach it out in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine with my sins. Forgiven, I am bound. Never more to roam. Never 
never more to roam. Never more to roam. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out take your burdens to the lord and leave it come and leave it here leave it there leave it there leave it there take your sickness to the Lord and leave it there now now if you trust and never doubt he will surely bring you out take your burden to the Lord and leave it there if the world from you is hold of its silver and its gold and you have to get along with me just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there now. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your soul is almost sinking in despair Jesus knows the pain you feel he can save and he can heal take your burden to the lord and leave it there 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 take take your body into the lord and leave it there if you trust and never doubt he will surely bring you out take your burden to the lord and leave it there when your enemies are still and your heart begins to fail don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer he will make a way for me and will lead me safely through take that burden to the Lord and leave it there leave it there
Can I hear you? Were you useful days, Sagon? And old age is chilling on. And your body bends beneath the weight of care. He will never, never, never leave you then. He'll go with you to the end. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Everybody now leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your bodies to the Lord and leave it there. It is well, it is with my soul, it is well, it is well. Well, it is well with your soul. With it is well. We have an ankle that keeps the soul. All the billows roll fast into the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the saviors. We have an anchor, we have an anchor that keeps the soul yes, steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fast into the rock which cannot move, a grounded foam and deep in the Savior. Everybody, we have an ankle that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fast into the rock which cannot move, grounded foam and deep. In the Savior's love, where your anchor in the storm so fly, when the clouds unfold, their wings so stride, when the strong tide leaps and the cable strain, where your anchor drift off from remain. It is safely mortal well, that some sweet stand for it is well secured by the Savior's hand and the cable pass from his heart to mine can defy the blast to strength divine.
It will firmly hold in the streets of fear when the bleak has up told that the reef is near. Do the tempest rave and the wild winds blow. Not an angry wave shall my back overflow. We have an anchor and it keeps us so. Steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fast into the rock which can not move. Grounded foam and It will surely hold in the floods of death when the waters cold chill a little spread on the rising tide. It can never fill with a hope abide within the veil. When our eyes behold through the gathering night the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall and call fast. By the heavenly shore, when the storms all pass forevermore, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the Billows roll fast into the rock which can not move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Close your eyes and open your mouth and talk to the Lord with assurance, with faith, with confidence and trust in the Lord. This morning, this day, this week, this year, this life, you have an anchor that keeps the soul and is steadfast and sure. Nothing to shake you, nothing to disturb you, nothing to distract you, nothing can destroy you. You have an anchor. That anchor keeps the soul fasting to the rock which cannot move. Neither problem nor sickness, neither attack nor affliction, neither poverty nor famine, neither need nor necessity, not a power beneath the earth, not a power in the earth, and not a power in the sky can shake that rock of ages upon which you are steadfastly anchored. If no wind can move you, if no waves can disturb you, if no problems can shake you, if no plan or project of man can disturb you, then you ought to be a single-minded minister. If God is on your side, if the everlasting arms are underneath you, then you ought to be a single-minded servant of God. A single-minded soul seeker. A single-minded sheep in the fold of Christ. A simple, a simple single-minded shepherd. Leading the flock, a single minded sufferer, placing your sacrifice on the altar, knowing that nothing 
can shake or move you. Single-minded, having passion, having zeal, just wanting, consecrating, concentrating, focusing your life. On one thing, one ambition, saying, Lord, here am I, just this one thing that catches my attention. I'm going to stay with it till I die, tell the Lord, or ambition. You ought to be a man of one book, this Bible. You read it, you love it, you practice it, you believe it. You live by it. A man of one consecration, commitment, and covenant. Tell the Lord. And when you bring that sacrifice, consecration on the altar, you're not going to allow anything, any bird of prey to take it away from the altar. A man of one devotion. You are devoted to the Lord. You are determined and disciplined and diligent. And you have just this one thing at hand to do. A man of one endeavor, a woman of one endeavor, this is the only thing you're concerned about. If you have an anchor which cannot move, a rock, the rock of ages on which you are anchored, you have to be a man of one endeavor, a man of one focus. Focusing your life, your mind, your heart, your attention, your will on just this one thing. A man of one goal. What's your goal? What's your goal? What do you want to do in life? If all the grace of God have been provided available, if all the gifts of God of the Spirit has been provided available, what's your goal? What are you going to do? A man of one heart and one mind. One heart and one mind. It's all you have in your mind. Tell the Lord, because you are anchored on the rock of ages. You see, I have just one heart. A man of one interest. Nothing else interests you. From morning till night. From day to day. One interest. A man of only one joy, only one thing gives a joy to see souls saved and to see men and women coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. What joy that is, nothing else on earth gives a joy. A man of only one unique joy, a man that has only one king and lord and master, one king, one lord, one master, none else will rule your life. You surrender that life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Master of His people. I say nothing else will move my heart in any other direction. A man of one need and necessity. I need and not a place to go and preach Christ. Necessity is laid upon me. That's all that I care for. Because the rock of ages immovable, and because it's giving me promises irrevocable, I'm going to be a man of one need, a man of one necessity, a man of one office. I magnify that office of an evangelist, of a preacher, of a pastor, a man of one office, a woman of one office. Tell the Lord and let your life be hinged on this only one thing. A man of one purpose, a man of one pursuit. I follow hard after this, just this alone. One purpose, one pursuit. A man of one resolution. Just to follow the Lord all the days of my life. Just one resolution. And it's a man of one sacrifice. This is all I have, Lord. My very best. I place on the altar a man of one treasure. One treasure. The treasure that lives and abides in this serving vessel. A man of one utterance. Never say anything except as the Spirit gives him utterance. A man of one vision, the heavenly vision. 
King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, a man of one way. This is the only way I know. I'm not going to shift to the broad way. I keep to this narrow way. A man of one way. A man of one yearning. See your heart. A longing for this. A yearning for this. I want to be the best that God wants to be. Wants you to be here on earth. Here and now. And a man of one zeal. Zealous for good works. Tell the Lord and pledge your life completely unto the Lord. A passion of a single minded minister. Be rooted and grounded in this that the Lord has called us to. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, And those who have gotten out of bed, you are awake, you say, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. What a glorious, beautiful day. A day that is part with your blessing for your people, for your ministers. So we can have abundance and overflowing blessing to carry back to our various church locations. Do it for your people today in Jesus' name. Make us strong. Make us visionary. And make us mighty and powerful in the grace and the gift of God in Jesus' name. Be before us, be behind us, be around us and carry us through all that we need to do for your glory and for your service all through life in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, there will be no negative thing in our vein, in our mind, in our heart, in our spirit, in our soul, in our head, in our blood, in our body. Nothing negative in Jesus' name. With the passion of a God spirit driven mind or minister, oh Lord, will move on to do your will in Jesus' name. We'll stand on the promises of God that change not. And Lord, we pray all those promises of a yes and amen in every life in Jesus' name. No sickness will stop our journey. No body will stop our journey. No problem will stop our journey. No affliction will stop our journey. No tribulation will stop our journey. No scarcity or need will stop our journey. All our needs will be abundantly supplied in Jesus' name. Be exalted and glorified in every one of our lives, even this very day in Jesus' name. And confirm your blessing in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down now. We're back to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. We're looking at verses 6, 7, and 8. Acts chapter 26, verse 6. And now I stand and I'm judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. In verse 7, unto which promise? Our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night. Hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. In verse 8, why? Why should it be thought? It's seen incredible with you that God shall raise the dead. Here Paul the apostle, he was called to defend himself. And, his, and Paul Agrippa had said, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. And he said, me speaking for myself, that's nothing. Defending myself, that's nothing. And speaking to justify myself, that's nothing. I am here to defend that glorious name. I am here to defend that glorious gospel. I'm here to project the personality of the almighty God who sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And then, I told you last night, that Paul the apostle was very systematic in his approach and in his presentation even though this was all impromptu 
he was he didn't know before that they'll call him to this because first just said i don't want i don't know what to write about the man and i think it's unreasonable for me to send his prisoner to caesar and not be able to pen down his offense and king agrippa since you are familiar with these people the jews because they have some superstitions some ideas floating in their heads which i don't understand I, can you hear the man it was a private discussion between festus and agrippa and then agrippa said i'll hear the man i'll hear the man myself and paul did not know anything about that and they just called paul now and he said now come on here you're free to speak for yourself and then he began and he introduced it last night in verses one to five and now he's not going to give us the real sin the real meat of the whole sin and here is a foundation and you'll find he mentions the word hope a number of times look at verse six now i stand and i'm judged for the hope for the hope he said this shouldn't be something strange this hope goes back to the time of abraham when god said that he was going to give him a seed. And since that time, the people of Israel had been hoping and hoping and hoping it would be at their time. And so his hope was anchored on something very definite which God had promised unto Abraham. And then he said in verse 7, unto which promise are 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night. Hope to come, hope to come. He said, all the tribes of Israel, they'll be hoping for this day. And from the time of Abraham to the time of Moses and to the time of Samuel to the time of David and to the time of the prophets, the major prophets and the minor prophets, the people of God had been hoping that this will come. And now that the hope is realized and the hope is fulfilled, why is it that the people, they do not understand, this is what they have been hoping for, the latter part of verse 7, for which hope's sake. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Now, he wants to be very specific about what part of that hope is that the Jews were quarreling about. That's in verse 8. Why should it be thought a sin incredible with you that God should raise the dead? He was wondering now, are these the bona fide children of Abraham because when Isaac was to be born, Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. And if our father, Abraham, if he understood that there's nothing too hard for God and did not consider the deadness of Abraham of Sarah's womb, why should it be thought something incredible that God should raise the dead? Or the deadness of his own body. He didn't consider that. He knew that God is the God of life. And the God who creates. And the God who renews. And the God who brings life. Into everything that is dead. That's why he said. This is what we've been hoping for. From the time of Abraham and Sarah. In fact. When you think about Isaac. Why did Abraham. Why did he offer Isaac on the altar. Because he believed that God was able to raise him from the dead. From, from where he had got him originally. That's why he said children of Abraham and the twelve types of Israel. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead. And he was going to say later King Agrippa believest thou the prophets. If you believe the prophets why should it be thought a thing incredible. Didn't the prophets raise the dead? Didn't Elijah raise the dead? And didn't Elisha raise the dead? And if you're thinking about your Old Testament, why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God shall raise the dead? Now, he gives us another word in this passage that the word promise. The word promise. Look at verse 6 again. And now I stand 
and I'm judged for the hope of the promise. Because the promise was there, that's what gave us hope for the hope of the promise. And as you think about the promises God gave to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and David and Samuel and the rest of them in the Old Testament, then you cross over to the New Testament and the Bible is literally filled with promises. The promises of the word. And the reason why many people are not claiming that is because they have not seen, they have not known the climax of the fulfillment of the promise of God. And you know what helped Paul the Apostle? He always gauged his problem with the problems that had been. He always gauged the miracle he was expecting of the miracle that had happened already. And he says, as you look at life, as you look at life, you'll find the worst that can happen to man is that is dead. And as you look at all the miracles, the greatest that can happen to man is that he is raised from the dead. He says, I take my cue from that. I take, I base my face on that. I look at the stretch of the line. I look at the greatest of the problem. I look at the worst that the devil can do. I look at the worst that the fall of man had brought and what is that death that's the worst sickness that's less suffering that's less imprisonment that's less affliction that's less opposition that's less and all infirmities that's less i look at the worst that the that the fall of adam had brought and it is death and then i look at the greatest manifestation of the power of the almighty god and that is the resurrection from the the dead and then he says if God can do the greatest of all miracles he did it in the Old Testament and now he did it in the New Testament and he raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead but now Paul the Apostle is specializing on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ because you'll find that in the case of all those resurrections those who are raised from the dead in the Old Testament there was an human agent, human agent, Elijah, and human agent, Elisha, and human agent. And when you come to the New Testament, all the apostles and human agent, all those human agents, but now it says this one is different. This one is a fulfillment of the a promise that the Lord, the Almighty God, had made unto his people. Without any human agent on that first day of the week, angel appeared from heaven and rolled away the stone. And all those people that were watching, all of them, they were streaking to the ground. And Jesus rose from the dead. And he said, everybody knew that. Everybody knew that. Only that the Jews were pretending in Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 28 verse 1. No human agent here. And if God can perform this miracle without a human agent, and why should you think this to be incredible? God created the world out of nothing. And he created the whole universe out of nothing. If he created the whole universe out of nothing, why should it be such incredible, unbelievable, impossible that God should raise the dead? In Matthew chapter 28 verse 1, in the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake no human agent now for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for the fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men nothing ever happened like that before check up all the others that were raised from the dead from the old testament to the new testament this one is peculiar and this one is unique and this one is special didn't they know that that actually happened of course everybody knew everybody knew hey, look at verse 11 now when they were going, beho uh, going behold some of the watch came into the city and they showed to the chief priests all the things that were done it wasn't something secret 
and, he, and that's why Paul the apostle was saying the things were not done in a corner it was known it was revealed everybody saw this and when they were assembled with the elders that he saw those all those the watchers it says and are taking counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers saying say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money. Bribery and corruption did not start just last year. It started long, long ago. Hush money. Get the money and keep quiet. Get the money and don't reveal the secret. Get the money and don't ever tell the investigators the real truth. Hush money. Keep quiet. Get the money. And they muscled their mouths and their minds and their hearts and their brain and their life and their destiny with money. And so it says in this, uh, in this uh, verse, uh, verse 14, and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and secure you so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until when until this day paul the apostle said why are you judging me and why are you accusing me everybody knows this this is an open secret and because you are quiet about the secret which is known to everybody that christ rose from the dead and then you put me in chase that's why he said i'll never compromise with you you know the truth i know the truth and the only difference is that you are quiet about the truth i am declaring proclaiming publicity in the truth. Why should it be thought? It's seen impossible. It's seen incredible with you that God shall raise the dead. God has power. I said he has power. And your problem in ministry, your problem as a man, your problem as a woman, your problem as a national within any country in Africa. Your problem is not up to the problem of raising Jesus Christ from the dead. And if Christ rose from the dead without any human agent, that same power is coming upon your life this morning. Without anybody coming to touch you and push you and anoint you with anything from heaven, you'll hear the sound of the mighty angel. And you'll hear the power of the almighty God come into your life and it will roll away every stone that is hindering you from getting up in Jesus' name. And life from heaven will come into your body, into your soul, into your mind. You'll come alive once again in Jesus' name. The wonder of God's incredible promise. The wonder of God's incredible promise. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the word of God's incredible promise the word he gave us the promise in the word that he gave the word of god's incredible promise number two the working of god's incomparable power incomparable power you cannot compare that power the power of god that's able to create the whole universe out of nothing and able to raise the dead without any human agent able to do all things so cannot compare that power with any other power the working of god's incomparable power number three the wonder of god's incontestable performance the the wonder of god's incontestable nobody can doubt this or dispute it or contest it or argue against it or have any gain say concerning it the wonder of god's incontestable performance number one what's number one the word of God's incredible promise. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 6. Now, and now I stand, and I'm judged for the hope of the promise made of 
God unto our fathers. If God has given you any particular promise in the word and that has stuck within your heart and you're holding on to it, it may look incredible. It may look impossible. It may look unbelievable. Hold on to it. It will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. When God said, this will happen because God had declared it, it will roll back all the obstacles in your way all the mountains in your way all the stone that the authorities may put on that and they say this will not be possible this will not be possible i'm telling you this morning hold on to the promise of god every obstacle and every stone every rock of offense will be rolled out of your way in jesus name we're looking at chapter 13 of Acts. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 32. And we declare unto you glad tidings. You have good news today. You have good news in your life. And what Jesus Christ did and what God did through Jesus Christ, everything is for you. I said everything is for you. If you are the only sinner in the world, Jesus will still have died. If you are the only person in need of miracle, in need of the touch of God, in need of the supernatural manifestation of the power of God, if you are the only person in need of seeking and searching and finding God, if you are the only person having any obstacle in your life, God will still have said the Lord Jesus Christ and he has sent him for you. I said he sent him for you so that the impossible, the incredible, the unbelievable will happen in your life. And he said in that verse 32, and we declare unto you that glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God has fulfilled the same. God has fulfilled the same. You know, it's a man that will give you a promise and then after a few weeks, after a few months, after a few years, you ask him, oh, he said, pardon me, I just, I just forgot about, you know, my mind is thinking about a lot of things. I think about this, about this, about this, and, and I just forgot. Not God, he'll never forget you. And he'll never forget the word he has given unto you. He'll never forget the promise he has given unto you. Now God has fulfilled the same unto us their children. In that he has raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten you. The Lord remembered. When did he make the promise? When did he give the word, the word of this promise? Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 18, looking at verse 15. It says, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. Is that small p in your Bible or capital P? Tell me out loud. If you're hearing me and you have not gone to sleep, what kind of P is that? <laughs> Capital P. We're using the same kind of Bible. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. And of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him she shall hearken. In verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet. From among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. You will see here how long ago the Almighty God made the promise unto his people. And he said, a prophet is coming with capital P. Very different from every other prophet. This one is divine. And this one is eternal. I've been living, I've been existing from all eternity. He has no beginning, he has no end. And he'll be born of a virgin. And then after he's dead, after they kill or slay him, then he will rise again the third day. And you know the Bible Bible says, and God has fulfilled, God has fulfilled that promise he made unto the fathers, and the promise that the Lord gave you, he has fulfilled everything. 
I said he has fulfilled everything. Now some people, they only remember the promise that God gave them in this last retreat. That's all they remember. But the promise that God gave you three years ago, seven years ago, 20 years ago, even sometimes before you were born again and he painted that in your heart and he wrote that in your heart and he said, this is what I will do for you. And that is what had made you to clinch unto the Lord. But you say, now time is going and seven years have gone, 10 years have gone, 15 years have gone. Has God forgotten he will never forget. He will still fulfill it. Rake it up together. Gather it all together. Assemble it all together. Everything the Lord has ever shown you. Everything the Lord has ever told you. Everything the Lord has ever painted in your heart. All the promises he has given you since you came to know the Lord. And it is very clear in your heart as daylight. You say, Lord, I thank you. I know you have not forgotten. I rake them up. I gather them up. I assemble them together. And I'm expecting you're going to fulfill your promise in my life and it will in Jesus name Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 Acts chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 22 Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 verse 22 it says for Moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you here and now Peter was reminding the people of Israel. He said, you are forgotten because, you know, you, you can't remember once something is gone beyond five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years. It's gone from your mind. But God is not like a man. It's not like any of us. And the promise he gave unto Abraham and unto Moses long, long ago, a thousand years have gone now. But all the same, God has now sent the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 20 three and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people i will not be destroyed because you know it says everyone that will not hear that prophet everyone that will not believe that prophet everyone that will not accept that prophet the lord jesus christ he shall be destroyed from among the people but thank god you're a believer i say thank god you're a believer not only an ordinary believer, you are an extraordinary believer, making other believers out of the unbelievers in Jesus' name. And if those who are believing, if they have life, you making believers out of other people, you are going to have that life multiplied in Jesus' name. In verse 24, yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days, and ye and the, and the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy sea shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed unto you first, unto you first. God, having raised up Jesus, his son Jesus, sent him to do what? To do what? To bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. You see what uh, uh, the apostle was saying? He was saying, is this strange to you? That God remembered his word. What do you expect of a good man? You want a good man to remember his word. What do you think of a good God? You want a good God to remember his word. What do you think of a faithful man? A dependable man? A trustworthy man? When a trustworthy, dependable, faithful man gives you his word, you want to believe that he will remember. He will fulfill it. What do you expect of a faithful God? A trustworthy God? A covenant-keeping God? You expecting to fulfill his word and that's exactly what he has done he has said the lord jesus christ i believe i said i believe every word the heavenly father has given me has given you he will fulfill in jesus name and you don't look at anything incredible, anything unbelievable anything impossible romans chapter 4 in romans chapter 4 Reading from verse 16, Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith. Thank God that faith is in your heart. That it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure unto how many? 
tell me. All the seed, and you are part of that all. This morning, the fulfillment of the promise is coming your way. You will not be able to escape the power of God. It will come upon you and roll away every impossibility in Jesus' name. Not to, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, even God, even God, who quickens the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Calleth those things which be not as though they were. He calleth, he calleth, he calleth those things which be not as though they were. I'm asking you once again, what picture is the Lord painting your heart? What sketch and what, uh, what program, what, what plan is the Lord drawing in your heart? You know, it's like when an architect gets somewhere. The whole place is a virgin land. And then the, the proprietor or whatever calls him and he says, I want to have a school here. I want to have an hospital here. I want to have whatever it is here. And the architect, when you see nothing, when you see nothing, Nothing. The architect already looks at all this. He sees the foundation. There's nothing there. And he sees all the poles there. And he sees all the expanse of what is going to stretch on it. He sees everything there. And he sees the whole painting. And he says, yes, I see. And then the proprietor or whoever the client is asking him, what are you going to do? Oh, he says, I'm going to do this. And while he's, he's, he's having the picture in the mind. And God wants to make an architect of every one of us. The architect of your life and then you see the picture that is painted in your heart and when everybody around you sees nothing you will see it all I said you see it all and then you project 10 years from now 20 years from now 25 years from now if Jesus starts and you see the great picture of the work of your hand of the work of your ministry of the expansion the extent of the great thing God is going to do through you never mind that it appears there's nothing there today never mind it appears you don't have the resources today all the resources of heaven they are available for you and they will carry out and accomplish everything in Jesus name and even when it appears that you are past time you will never pass time I said you'll never pass time because when it came to Abraham it appeared the time was gone I'm losing time I'm losing energy I'm losing opportunity I'm losing privilege you will never lose opportunity or privilege or time everything God has ordained for you to do they will be done in Jesus name uh, you want to know that all that picture is in the mind of God already. Uh, did, can you imagine? Can you imagine when Abraham did not see Isaac, God saw Isaac. And when Abraham did not see the nations that will come through him, God saw the nations. And when God, when Abraham did not see the kings and princes will rise uh, through him, God saw those kings and princes that will rise. And then he told him, I have made you when there was no nothing i've made you a father of many nations because god calleth those things which be not as though they were can you please do yourself a favor through this day hold on to one promise of god and anytime you open your mouth declare that promise even when it appears it's not there, declare that promise. Even when it appears it's impossible, declare that promise. Even when it appears everything is against it. Circumstances are against the situation against it. And then all the machinations and all the operations and all the activities of men are against it. You keep on declaring it and it shall be so in Jesus' name. Call it those things which be not as though they were. Calling those things which be not as though they were. Calling those things which be not as though they were. And they become visible in your life. In verse 18, who against hope believed in hope. Never again for yourself, for your wife, for your husband, for your children. Never, never again say this is hopeless. There's nothing hopeless. 
I said it's or nothing hopeless. Now, never again in your life, in any situation in the church, you know, and you're looking at you, that section of the church, and then you say, I don't think anything can be done for this. This is hopeless. Never, 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 never say again that this section of the church, there's nothing hopeless in the church of the living God. There's nothing hopeless in the family of the living God. There's nothing hopeless when God God is at work. All hopeless things will receive hope and life in Jesus' name. We against hope, believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. 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 And you know, there are many people going through life and li they live according to that which is happening around them. According to that which surrounds them. According to what they feel in their heart. According to what they feel in their body. According to what they see on the sick child. According to what they see in their location. But he says, is according to that which was spoken. And what was spoken by the Almighty God will swallow up everything that is spoken by man. Everything you see and everything you feel will be swallowed up by that which has been spoken by the Lord in Jesus' name. And so you go through life and whatever you see, if that thing was not spoken from heaven, it swallowed up. Whatever you feel, if nothing was not spoken from heaven, that one is swallowed up. And whatever information anybody comes to give you, whatever has not been affirmed and confirmed from heaven, that thing is swallowed up. Because now you live your life according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. He considered not is somebody now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being what? And being what? I said, I'm being what? In your life this morning, you're fully persuaded that God is on the throne. That there's nothing too hard for God. That with God all things are possible. You're fully persuaded beyond any shadow of doubt. That God is greater than whatever you see. God is greater than whatever you feel. God is greater than whatever information anybody has given you. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised he was. He was. He was able also to perform able to perform point number two the working of god's incomparable power the working of god's incomparable power it will happen satan likes it or not it will happen every word every promise the lord has given you it will happen and the, uh, the, the sky may be turbulent and cloudy. And the seas may rage with their waves. And men may become like wild, ferocious animals. It doesn't matter what people say, what people do. And how the sea of humanity, how they become disturbed. But what the Lord has given, what the Lord has said, it will be done in Jesus' name. The walking of God. God's incomparable power. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 8. Why should it be thought incredible with you? Why should it be thought incredible with you? Now, now, look up here for a moment. God has given you an assignment. This is what you do. And the devil will come to tell you, like he told Moses, you cannot, you cannot. And then you're repeating the words of Satan. I cannot, oh God, send another man. Moses, why should it be thought incredible with you that God will, put, will, will pick up somebody like you and send to Pharaoh of whom you are afraid? 
made and then God chose a, jo he chose a Joshua and then all these walls were there and these people that followed Joshua from the wilderness of Moses and Joshua and now Moses is gone but followed Joshua now they didn't have any experience of raising a mighty army of raising a mighty war because all these 40 years their business was to murmur and to grumble and to complain looking for water looking for manna looking for food all the material things they were looking for and they didn't have time to train themselves why should it be thought incredible with you that without any human agency these jericho walls you see today everything will collapse everything will fall down and then here comes goliath and saul why should it be such incredible was you that god will raise up a little child in youth and he'll bring down this goliath this goliath that you see today he'll come down i said he'll come down why should it be thought incredible what you here is elijah and he's telling this uh, woman now he said by this time what's your need you don't have a child you're going to carry your own baby and he said man of god don't deceive me why should that be thought incredible what you elijah was asking Gehazi, what's the need of this woman shall we speak to him for the king of this or that and the woman said i live in my country and Gehazi said a eh, sir master she doesn't have any child then the man of god said by this time next year you'll carry your baby and then the woman said man of god don't deceive me why should that be thought incredible there had been a famine of many years in the land of the people of god and then they were even eating things unclean things they shouldn't eat and then the king said what shall i do for these people and was looking for elisha to take his head away and then elisha said hold him there at the gate hear the word of the lord by this time tomorrow a measure of meal and of shekel will be sold for this and that and the man on whom the king was leaning said even if god will open the windows of heaven can that be why should that be thought incredible what you i'm saying that god will provide your need and God will blow away all the problems in your life. Every sickness, every infirmity, the Lord will clear away. Even when you are near the grave like this, but you have not finished what you ought to do in life, what God has appointed you for, he'll bring you back. New power will come into you new authority will come into you and the power of the highest will envelope you and then energize to start you from within and when they thought you had finished then you rise up again and you start walking as if you had never done anything if you are saying how can that be why should it be such incredible with you here comes an angel and was talking to zechariah and he says zechariah praise the lord your own prayer is come as a memorial before god and then what's that god has answered your prayer he will give you a child and zechariah said now i'm old elizabeth my wife is old as well shall we have a baby now why why should it be thought incredible what you and that's how john the baptist came and then he went to mary the virgin hail mary the lord has blessed you you are favored of the lord and then he was sure startled at that as that a visitation and at that thing the utterance of the angel and he said you are highly favored among all women you will have a child and his name will be jesus christ the son of the highest and then mary said but i don't know any man why should it be thought incredible with you look at all the things that god has done great 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 miracles that they are beyond measure they are beyond evaluation if god could do all these incredible and all these impossible things all these unbelievable things this morning in your life something is happening why should it be thought incredible it, your thought is disturbing you your mind is disturbing you and what you are thinking look at this look don't look at this look at that look at calvary don't look at this look at that look at heaven don't look at this look at that look at the power and the faithfulness of the almighty god and ask yourself why should it be thought incredible with me that God shall raise the dead. Anything too hard for God? Anything too hard for God? Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 14. Genesis 
chapter 18, verse 14. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At that, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Did she have a son? Ordinary son? Extraordinary. When God promises you, when it comes eventually, it will be extraordinary in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 32. In Jeremiah chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32. We're looking at verse 17. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth. Uh, what needs to be made in your life or remade in your life? What needs to be created in your life or recreated in your life? What needs to be formed in your life or reformed in your life? What needs to be fashioned in your life or, or refashioned in your life? If God can make this whole universe without any atom, and he made everything out of nothing. Why should it be thought incredible that that creative miracle in your life to today, God will perform it? Because it says, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by the great, thy great power and stretch out arm. And tell me the rest. Say it with confidence. There is nothing too hard for thee. That thing you brought from your family and you are saying, this is my need. This is my need. Is this, uh, is this too difficult for God? And I see you brought uh, from your church location and say, this is the major, major need in a church location. Is that too hard for God? And you see you are passed through in the church location and you're saying, you know, we went through this and went through this. And every time you talk and you pity yourself and you're talking in the negative and you're in the dark room and you're developing kind of negative picture and negative posture, stop all that. And remember, why should it be thought is seen incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Why should you think there is something impossible? There is nothing too hard for God. It will be done in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And I'm reading there from verse 37. Luke chapter 1. Reading from verse 37. It says in verse 37, For with God, For with God, For with God, For with God, Nothing shall be impossible. This morning, every, in every hall over here, in every hall over there, every bench where you're sitting, look at whatever is there. Look at whatever problems are abiding there. I want to tell you this morning, there's nothing impossible with God. We come to point number three. Point number three, the wonder of God's incontestable performance. The wonder of God's incontestable performance. He will perform it. To the surprise of all your friends, he will perform it. And to the consternation of all your enemies, he will perform it. And to the joy of the people of God, he will perform it. Any negative thing you see there today, any deadly thing you see there today, everything will go and then to your joy and the fulfillment of serving God in your life. It will be done in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 8 again. Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 8. Why should it be thought a sin incredible? with you. Uh, look up brothers and sisters. You know situations will come in life and when a situation first comes, bam! Against your life. And then it's something totally new. It's something you have never thought about. It's something you are not expecting. And because it's totally completely new, then the thought that will come is you think this one is incredible. How will this be done? Can I just remind you, brothers and sisters, most of the problems that came upon people in the in Bible days, they were new. They came for the first time. When Abraham was alive, he had never seen another person that had been given a promise at the age of 75. 
And then was expecting that child to come 10 years gone, 20 years gone, until 25 years. He had never seen anybody like that. A hundred years of age and then the wife, 90 years of age, still expecting a child. It was new, a new problem with a new solution. You see, when something comes to your life, comes to your way, that's the first thing you're thinking about. When the children of Israel, they were marching in their millions and they were going to the land of Canaan, it, that they couldn't find a similar situation of the Red Sea be, before them and the mountains on the other side, on, on either side, and then the Egyptian army behind. It was something totally new, totally strange. They couldn't check up any case history when it happened to so and so. This is what she did. That's the prescription that was given. It was new. Even though it was new, there was a solution to every problem. I said your solution to every problem. When Joshua got to the land of Canaan, the Lord said, now you're going to circumcise all the people, all the people of war. And then he circumcised them. And they were all weak. And their enemies were looking at them like this and staring at them. What are we going to do? All the men in the nation, they had been circumcised. And now they're sick and weak. What if these people rise up and they bombard us and swallow us up at this time? And all those, they just stayed where they were. And then God said now After they got healed from all that They got to Joshua chapter 6 And then God said go around Jericho walls Just once They don't say anything Don't command anything Don't rebuke anything And don't demand anything Don't even pray Just walk around that had never happened to anybody anywhere. When God tells you something, even though it is new, it had never happened before, it will happen at your own time. A promise you have never seen. A problem nobody else had ever confronted. And that problem is coming to you. You cannot find any example anywhere similar to this. All the same, I declare to you this morning, that new problem, a new solution will come. The power of the highest will come and perform a miracle in your life you'll never be the same again in jesus name and now it says why should it be thought incredible uh, anytime something occurs to you like that and a thought is coming to you and you're saying i'm finished i'm through i'm gone this will destroy me this will take me away ask yourself why should it be thought a thing incredible with me my mind my soul why are you going astray why are you running so fast and leaving god and god's power and god's ability behind come back here why should it be thought speak to yourself my heart, why should it be thought incredible with you? My soul, why should it be thought incredible with you? Why are you so agitated and worried and anxious and you're feeling as if everything is finished for you? God is just starting with you. I said, God is just starting with you. Why should it be thought a thing incredible as we're going to pray this morning and then God is going to, is such to enlarge your coast? and expand your request and ask for something something that looks impossible something that looks incredible something that looks way far off there as if will this ever be done and if your mind questions that greatness and whether it is possible or not you ask yourself the question why should it be thought incredible with me let me line up behind abraham let me take my point my place in the queue behind moses let me take my place in the line of joshua who was able to tell the sun stop right there and the moon stop right there until i finish the battle of the lord let me take my place behind Jehoshaphat here he never thought it incredible and while they began to sing the almighty God sent enemies and then the enemies behind began to kill themselves they will destroy themselves but you you are standing behind Jehoshaphat and you will stand firm and victorious in Jesus name Take your place in the queue and come and stand behind Ezekiah Lord I will not die Lord, I will not die. And I reverse that prophecy of Isaiah. And God said, Isaac, go back to that man and go and tell him. Because he doesn't want to come home now. He doesn't want to die now. Give him how many years? 
take your place and take your take your point and and stand behind that Ezekiah. Take your place and stand behind Daniel. If you happen to be in the lion's den, why should it be thought incredible with you that all those lions, even though those lions are not dead, and then it appears, what will I do? Do nothing. Go to sleep. I say go to sleep when you take your place behind these worthies of old and you know that what God said he will do, he will do. And nothing will be impossible in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Mark, from Mark chapter 7, verse 7. Mark chapter 7, we're looking at verse 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. This is your life. I said this is your life. It will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 7 verse 37 and they were beyond measure astonished. The Lord will surprise you. The Lord will surprise you. They were beyond measure astonished saying he has done, he has done, he has done, he has done all things well. And you know some people say if the Lord will remove this even if this and this and that still remain I will I'll tolerate that you will not tolerate any problem here you will not tolerate any sickness there you will not tolerate any impossibility here in your life this morning he has done all things well in your life this morning he has done all things well in your family this morning he has done all things all things all things all things he has done all things well do you believe that why are you sitting now why don't you stand up and say lord i believe lord i believe lord i believe you have done all things well let the sick say i am well let the poor say i am rich and let the sick say i am well the lord has touched me because of his incredible incontestable incomparable power and that power is working in your life today because he has done all things 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 things well he'll do it he will do it he cannot fail he cannot fail he cannot fail the word of his incredible promise he has given the word unto you he has given that promise unto you he has given that promise unto you and you're saying lord i believe lord i accept lord i believe and lord i accept the word of the salvation of your family and the word of the purifying sanctification of your own soul and the word of empowering energizing you the power of the holy ghost upon your life and upon your ministry and the word of the provision abundant provision sufficient provision that is making for you you are not poor again don't tell me you are poor with all these promises of god don't tell me you are going through a family with all these promises of god don't tell me there's an impossibility in your life with all these promises of God, don't tell me there is a mountain that is hindering you from moving ahead and making progress with all these promises of God. Don't tell me there's an enemy so strong. Don't tell me there is a demon so strong. Don't tell me there are powers of darkness so strong that will hinder you from being what you ought to be with all these incredible promises of God. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God shall raise the dead, your dead body, any part of a body that is dead the lord will give it life will raise you up and you will know that today god has spoken concerning you and nothing god has said will be fulfilled will be fulfilled unto him that is able to do exceed abundantly beyond what you can think or ask by his mighty power that worketh effectually and effectively in you you can talk to the lord and say lord i believe lord i believe all things are possible unto them who believe my sickness is gone my weakness is gone my infirmity is gone my failure is gone my defeat is gone my sins are forgiven my confusion is gone my condemnation is gone Lord, you have come in your mighty power. You have come in your glory. And you have rolled away, rolled away, rolled away the stone. The Lord is doing it right now. He cannot fail. He will not fail. He cannot fail. He will not fail. He cannot fail. He will not fail. In your life, in your family, he will never fail. He will never fail. Even though the promises have been given five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, and the picture has been painted in your heart, and you are thinking, will it be? Will it be? will it be yes it is yes it is yes it is because there's a god in heaven it is
is because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Yes, it is because the Holy Ghost has been given. Yes, it is because there's power in that name, in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. And because all Jericho walls are sure to fall. Yes, it is. And because it will divide every red sea before you. Yes, it is because it will conquer every enemy. Yes, it is because it will make impossibilities to be possible in your life. Yes, it is because it collects those things who be not as though they were. It collects those things who be not as though they were. He called it those things which be not as though they were. He called it those things which be not as though they were. Because of that, it's happening today. Because of that, it's happening today. Because of that, it's happening today. Why should I ever think it is incredible? Why should it ever occur to you to me that anything is incredible? Why should you ever feel? Why should you ever think? Why should you ever say that any of the promises of God are incredible or impossible or unbelievable? The Lord is doing it now. Stand in that faith and stand firm. Anchored on the rock of ages that cannot move. Your promise has been given. And the performance has been made. And the incredible thing, the impossible thing is coming in your life now. And the Lord is saying, this is a new day for you. When you know nothing impossible again, nothing incredible again. Because God, the God of power and the God of might and the God of grace. And the God of all possibilities is working, is working, is working in your life right now. Believe it, accept it, accept it and believe it. It is confirmed, it is so, it is so, it is so. It's so in your life, it's so in your life, it's so in your life. You'll never find anything impossible, incredible anymore as you stand upon the word of the Lord. And you're holding on to that promise of the Lord. It's yea and amen, it's yes and amen. It is affirmed, it is confirmed. And when everyone says yes, nothing, nobody else can say no. It is done. It is done, it is done, it is done, it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Anything impossible? Anything incredible? Anything unbelievable? No, because the Lord is the God of heaven and is the God of all power. Why should ever, why should it ever occur to you that anything is incredible or impossible? The God of all power will move into that situation right now. Into your life right now. And the power of the almighty God will roll away and will move away every mountain out of your life in Jesus name. You will succeed in ministry. You will succeed in your family. You will succeed in your business. Anything you touch will turn to blessing in Jesus' name. The Almighty God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And you'll find every day of your life as you move on from day to day and week to week and month to month and year to year, you'll find incredible things happening. Unbelievable things happening. Impossible things becoming possible. There will be an energy, there will be a power. There will be, there will be an anointing. It will come out of your heart. And whenever you open your mouth and you declare the word of authority, it will be done in Jesus' name. You'll be master of every situation in your life. You'll be master of every circumstance in your life. You'll be captain of the sheep in Jesus' name. No water will swallow you up. No enemy will swallow you up. No situation will be able to confront you or make you ashamed in Jesus' name. The power of the Almighty God will go with you all through your ministry. Underneath you will be the everlasting hand. Around you will be the wall of fire. Beyond you and before you will be the promise of the Lord. And supporting you, going, coming from behind you, will be the almighty God and the mighty terrible one. And when God arises in your life, everything negative will be scattered in Jesus' name. From this time on and in this new year coming, you'll be victorious. The things that brought sadness and tears into your eyes, into your life in the passing year. And you said, why is this and why is this and why is this and why is that? All those things will pass away completely in Jesus' name. And every day and every week, you'll be calling those things would be not as though they were. You'll be calling those things would be not as though they were. You'll be calling those things would be not as though they were. And the moment you open your mouth and call those things would be not as though they were, it will be fulfilled. 
it will be done it will be done this year there will be mighty testimonies in the ministry mighty testimonies in every church and everywhere we gather together we'll be gathering not to come and cry and to come and sorrowful we'll be gathering together for testimonies in jesus name great great express what we'll do and perform and the lord will be on our side in jesus name from the north and the middle belt and the south will be hearing good news from west africa central africa southern africa northern africa will be hearing good news in jesus name stretch out your hand and touch the lord and let that good news begin right now let the glad tidings begin right now let the possibilities begin right now father in the name of jesus we thank you, Lord, because we know you have spoken good concerning your people, concerning your servants, and concerning the whole church. Oh, Lord, we pray from this very moment, those incredible, imp impossible things will become possible in Jesus' name. I pray you touch everybody right now. And I pray, Lord, every mountain and every difficulty and every problem, every sickness, every attack, every affliction, roll them away in Jesus' name. Put an end to the activity of Satan. Put an end to the, all the performance of evil people in Jesus' name. Reverse every curse. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. And let your people now begin to enjoy their inheritance in Jesus' name. All the negative thoughts of the past, this impossible, this incredible, this unbelievable, will stamp them under our feet. Lord, from now on, we are more than conquerors. You have given us your promise, and we know all the promises are going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Lord, give strength to those who are weak. Give healing to those who are sick. Give provision to those who are poor. And those who are barren, give them miracle children in Jesus' name. Let everyone have miracle that will make them laugh. Something great. Something wonderful something exalted something high something they have never seen lord everyone in this congress surprise everyone with miracles in jesus name and your word you have given us that we are holding lord it will be fulfilled and then when we come back together it will be testimony upon testimony in jesus name we thank you lord because we know you have answered we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said. And the people of God said. <laughs>